Hi guys, welcome to Monocure 3D Pro Tips. Today we're going to check out this 3D printer from Epax. This is their 5.5 inch X1. I'm not sure if they've sent us the newest version that they've announced on their website, the X1N. They say it's got a few more upgrades, including a Chai 2 box mainboard. They have a number of printer in their range. This is the smallest and their least expensive. I've heard some great things about these printers. Let's get it out of the box, let's set it up, dial in our resin, and let's get this thing printed. The Epax company is based in the USA in a town called Morrisville in North Carolina. Now I had to Google where this was and I had to zoom out quite a way before I actually got my bearings. Basically it's on the east coast of America, somewhere between New York and Florida. Printers are manufactured in China, but the support comes out of the USA. Without further ado, let's take my trusty knife and let's open this box. All right, what's this say? Please read the manual PDF included in the USB stick first. All right, a user's manual, all in English, very comprehensive, thorough, that's great. Settings for resin, unfortunately, no monocure resin there. I have to do something about that. Some filters always come in handy. What's this? This will be this famous non-FET FET film I keep hearing about from EPAX. It looks like FET film to me, but they call it non-FET FET film. Uh, apparently, it releases better than normal FEP. We'll have to check that out and see. But the printer does work with normal FEP as well. Standard AC adapter. It's interesting, that one says film. More film, so we get two lots of film. This is also a bit infamous, this uh, bill plate. Uh, they say it's leveled from the factory. It doesn't need to be homed or leveled. It just should work straight out. It does have the ability to make adjustments if you ever do need to by loosening these screws here, but apparently it will work. So we will test that. It's just on this build plate, it's a nice solid build plate. It has the nice machine tapering and obviously the, the bare aluminium surface which is going to give you really good adhesion as well. Open up this. The power cord, Australian version for us here in Australia and a plastic scraper and a USB stick and an Allen key. Oh, one last thing, top of the box, a metal scraper which is good to get the prints off the build plate. It's certainly... Uh, you know, got a bit of weight behind it. You can straight away tell that this is a solid machine and uh, not made of plastic like some of them are. I feel like I'm a doctor delivering a baby. There you go. Um, look, it's certainly nicely packaged and protected. I like when they wrap them totally in plastic. It just added protection when it travels to stop it being scratched and whatever. Plastic protection on the screen, we'll remove that. Paper on the perspex, I like that, stop that being scratched. And from the inside too, very nice. Um, that's interesting, I've never seen that before. That's the vat wrapped in plastic and it's got the, um, no foam or anything. It's in a, actually not wrapped in plastic, it's in a Ziploc bag and it obviously has the film in it and ready to go. Apparently this has got a rubber seal in it too, certainly metal and well built. It actually has uh, some little markers here for the level. That's a good thing to have. Every vat should have that. So first impressions, it's certainly a solid machine. As I said, when I was taking it out, I mean, that you can hear that there. That's, uh, that's metal on metal. And, and the whole case, the only plastic on this case is the UV window there. So a UV proof window and the rest of it is anodized aluminium. It reminds me a lot of the Frozen Shuffle series that they came out with the printers like this with the metal case. You know, straight away it feels solid and certainly got a robustness about it. The other thing I've noticed is here it's got some black tape, like a, not just tape, a lot of the printers just use black, black electrical tape. This actually has a, a proper fitted black sticker around the LCD. I like that, I think that's a sign of quality. Straight away you look at the rail here, it has got the linear rail with the dual rollers, the two rails either side. That feels very solid and steady and would be very very good for avoiding any sort of Z wobble. The build plate looks like it just slides in like that, pretty straightforward. As I said before, it's leveled in the factory. I guess let's get it set up. Let's get some power to it and see how it prints. First thing we'll do is set up the power. Before we do that, let's just have a quick look around the rest of the printer. So we'll close the lid. On this side here, we have the USB and an ethernet cable for network printing. And there's the power switch on the back. Very, very plain, not much to see. Just the bot here to put the power, plug it in and then power it on. 
Now it should come on. If it doesn't, we're in trouble. There it is, e-packs. So let's go through the menu and have a look at the settings. So we'll start off with the tool. We have the lift here for the Z. So again, like most of the printers, you can select 0 0.01 mil, or one mil or 10, if you're gonna move the build plate up and down. So obviously up and the big arrow that says down is down. That's all working as it should. Stop, that's an interesting feature. I haven't seen that before on any of the other printers. I quite like that. If you were going down and about to smash into the LCD screen, you can hit stop. That's good. Uh, home would take it right down to the base, to home. We don't need to do that uh, at the moment. Calibrate, now that's gonna be to do with the screen. So if we press that, it's gonna show up. Uh, that's interesting. So uh, after pressing calibrate, it not only turned on the UV light and showed the pattern on the top to show us that the screen is cutting the shape and the light's working, but the fan turned on and just now it's turned off again. So I like that. That's that's really clever and, and why more printers don't do that, I don't know. So when the light's on, the fan's on, which makes sense. And when the, lights, the UV light's off, which is the thing that's generating the heat, the fan's not on, which is a lot quieter. As you can hear, it's, I haven't seen that before and I think that's a really good feature. So setting zero, as I mentioned before, these printers come leveled and homed out of the factory. They even say it in the manual that it comes leveled. We're gonna take their word for it and we're gonna try that in a minute. System, information, IDs, versions, all that sort of thing. It looks like that's also a mute or volume button. Network, according to the manual, depending on what printer you have, it depends whether it ha uses the network. Interestingly, all of them connect using the USB, of course. The slightly larger models use ethernet. None of them have the ability for Wi-Fi, but on this menu, if you hit network, there's a little Wi-Fi symbol there. So is that something that they're thinking about adding in later versions, or they added it and they couldn't quite get it to work, so they've disabled it? Wi-Fi has never been something that has, in my experience uh, uh, and with um, other 3D printers, ever been very successful. Uh, and they've always shied away from it. I guess it's that whole connectivity thing. If you're going through a uh, long print, the last thing you do is want for the print to stop halfway through. But maybe it's something they're gonna add in later uh, updates, who knows? But the hardware's obviously there to do it. See what happens. So back to the menu, service, that's where you go for service and language. You can choose Chinese. If you press that again, it will go back to English. Perfect. Okay, so the last one is the print menu. Now that's gonna be blank because the USB is not in there. Let's sit down at the computer now and get it set up for printing. Okay guys, so I'm sat down at the computer. I'm gonna do what the instruction says and it says to put the USB stick in, go to chai 2 box I already have it downloaded. You can download it from the chai 2 box website if you need to and you go to the settings and then you go to add a new printer, go to default here. Let's call that the EPAC X1, it's better. Hit okay, okay that's added there. So now we need to import the profile. So we do that by here, import profile. Uh, we navigate to the USB stick, there it is there, no name, EPAC X1 config, we hit open and it looks like it's done. So now we've got all the settings from EPAC for this printer, the resolution, the size. Now, this is what we need to change uh, is obviously the resin setting. Our resin, we'll just call it 1.1 for the resin density. And we can change the name here to, today we'll use the Monocure Rapid Resin and that's $75 Australian dollars per litre. So now the print settings. So I always go for the 0.5 millimeter height as a good place to start. It is hard to see the layer lines at 0.5 and it's relatively quick. So if I went to 0.25, it would be a lot uh, slower, half the speed essentially. So the bottom layer count uh, four, that's fine. Normal exposure time, eight seconds. Let's leave it at that and see what happens. Bottom exposure time, 40 seconds, that should be fine. Light off delay, they have that at zero and zero. And the bottom lift, lift distance five, I'm gonna make that six. And the lifting distance, I'm gonna change that to six. And I'm gonna leave these. So infill, we leave that to none. G code, we leave that as it is. That's exactly as EPACs want us to have it. And advanced, now that's interesting. I haven't seen this before, um, bottom light, PWM and light PWM. I'm assuming that's the power. Let's leave that at 255. Usually uh, that is full power when it comes to light. So we'll leave it at 255 
and see how it goes. The next thing we need to do is get a print on this build plate and slice it ready for printing. Let's go to open file and we'll go to our demo files up here and the mono matrix. I always like printing with this one as you guys know. It tells us a lot about our settings and how well the resin's dialed in with the printer. All right, so let's slice this and we'll just have a quick preview. Yep, it's all there. Most importantly, that first layer's on there. And let's go to the save. We've got the USB there, no name, and we'll call it, uh, let's call it 33 mono matrix so we can identify it and hit save in the CTB format. And we're saving that. All right. Okay, let's get this printer started. So first thing we need to do is get some gloves on. Impressive, hey? So let's put the vat in place. Just screw off the lugs there. The build plate just slots in like that. And that's it. We take the resin, of course we give it a shake and the resin goes into the vat. Pour that in there. And we've got our handy little markers at the back there. So we'll just go up to the second one. Give it a little twist like a wine bottle at the end there. Next, we need to take the USB stick and pop that into the side of the printer. Let's hit the print button, find the file. That looks like it there. Yep, that looks good. Let's hit the start button. The one that looks like the play should take around half an hour. We'll be able to see how the settings went. If eight seconds is too long or too short, uh, we'll be able to tell in about 30 minutes. So let's let the printer do its thing and we'll check it out. So it's letting us know that it's printing there. So just quickly guys, while this is printing, it uses a 50 watt rated five by 10 LED light array. Uh, now they've actually turned it down to 40 watts and the reason they did that is to improve the lifespan of the LCD screen. The build volume is 115 millimetres in length, 65 millimetres in width and 150 millimetre build height. The XY resolution reaches 0.047 millimetres and the minimal Z layer height is 0.01 millimetres. I've taken the print off the bill plate. I've cleaned it and resin away, of course. And guys, I have to say, I'm, I'm happy with that. For a 50 micron print, that's looking good. It's, you know, the details there, it's not over cured. I would be confident in putting a print on from one of our ambassadors with some supports. There you have it, the X1 from Epax. I have to say, I'm happy with this printer. It's a solid printer. It runs our resin beautifully with the standard settings. I didn't change a thing in the end. I just followed the instructions and I printed, and as you see the, the, the matrix model, it printed beautifully. So I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, as I said earlier, it's got a solid build. Uh, I reckon that this would be a good printer in our labs. I'd say the chemist would find it pretty hard to break this one, and it prints well. It's not the fastest printer, eight seconds that was, but still it's a good result. If you're thinking about getting this printer or you've already got this printer and you'd like to try the Monocure resin, go to the description below. I'll put a coupon code in there for 25% off your first order. Also, we'll put the printer settings down there and a link to the calibration model that I used in this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, remember to keep on 3D printing.